What's up guys, Asian here again with another Pre-PTS Graymore video. And this one is actually something that was not covered by Nevis' sneak peek. This is changes to werewolves. Yes, changes to werewolves. Both werewolves and vampires got some love here in the Graymore chapter. So all of these were screenshots from Hack the Minotaur's video, which will, uh, I will have link in the description below. Uh, this came from other content creators as well. So this is basically like telephone, except instead of like words, it's through screenshots. So nothing actually changes. So we know this information is going to be consistent between myself, Hack the Minotaur, and wherever Hack the Minotaur managed to get his information from. So right now we have the four active abilities here out of the five active abilities for werewolves. We don't know whether the fifth ability or the ultimate has been changed. We don't know whether the passives have been changed well. This is all we have to work on right now for werewolves. The first thing that I noticed, all of these are criminal acts. So it does seem like being a werewolf in a vampire will have negative side effects if you decide to transform or use the ability to city with guards. So be mindful of that. I guess the RPers are going to be happy now, I guess. I don't know if that was something that was sort of asked about or kind of commented on. But yeah, just be careful about transforming in the middle of a busy street now. But we're going to start from the left. We're going to go down and right. Starting off with pounds. So just just off the bat right now, these are the base abilities. Not taking a look at any of the morphs for these abilities. We don't know what the morphs are going to be like. We can take some guesses, but knows what they're going to be like so we're just taking a look at what the base abilities are so we have pounce pounce on an enemy with primal fury dealing 46 28 physical damage oh i will note we this is pre-pts so we don't know if these values are going to be final or not we also don't know what sort of build this guy was using so this might be just like nothing no armor for example this might be like oh i'm in a magic dps build so we don't know if these values are accurate to what you would actually have on a true werewolf dps so just keep that in mind before we make our judgments. Uh, so again, pouncing on a build on an enemy with Primal Fury, dealing a certain amount of physical damage. Activating the ability again within 5 seconds causes you to cast Carnage. Carnage causes the enemy to bleed for X amount of physical damage over 10 seconds, and deals up to 450% more damage to enemies under 100% health. This is pretty much going to be an execute that is always active. So for every... It's going to scale linearly. All abilities that have this X% percent more damage to enemies under X% percent more health, those are always linearly scaling. So for every 1% health missing, you're going to deal an extra 4.5% more damage uh, to that initial bleed value here. So let's say you're at 50%, 50 times 4.5, uh, uh, 225% more damage. Basically dealing a little over three times the damage that's listed here. So you'd be dealing about 10,000 physical damage over 10 seconds. And my guess is the ticks are going to dynamically update as the health ends up going down. Now the thing that is not clear here is whether you have to be, uh, actually no, gap closers now you can cast them within any range, so never mind. Uh, the other thing I will note is it doesn't say whether or not it is pounce, then pounce again, or it's pounce and then carnage. Or so basically what it is, what I'm trying to say is, is it going to be pounce, pounce plus carnage, or is it going to be pounce and then carnage when you cast the ability sec a second time. Not very clear here. I, again, I don't know where Hack the Minotaur got uh, this the source from, whether it's from like a analog website or if it came from a video that showcased how these abilities work. Uh, you can probably ask him on his video. Again, link in the description below to his video uh, there. But this should be interesting, especially that 450% more damage to enemies on 100% health. Uh, looks like it's going to be possibly pretty nasty in PvP be useful very useful in pve depending on what the final value is for damage moving on down to roar roar with bloodlust to terrify up to six nearby enemies leave fearing them for four seconds and sending them off balance for seven seconds while slotted you gain major savagery increasing your weapon crit rating by 2191 uh so this is just a fear uh i don't think this has changed currently i think this is still the same effect as roar on the live server right now uh the difference is while it's slotted you have major savagery so you don't need to use and power potion necessarily to get major savagery now because you have only five active abilities and you probably have the most slotted there you have it you have your major savagery right there you don't necessarily need to run from the damage potions if you are looking for that major savagery bonus there now of course we don't know what the 
morph effects are, where they're going to be the exact same, or they're going to be a little bit different here, uh, but that is that's Roar. It uh, wasn't really used too much in PvE or PvP to begin with. Uh, I don't see this being used situation uh, even after this change. Next we have Hercene's Bounty. Invoke the Huntsman's Blessing, healing you for 15 406 health. This ability scales off your max health. If you're at full health, you instead restore 3000 stamina. So you have a little bit of additional way to get some stamina back. Of course, this doesn't really matter for werewolves because you are probably just going to light attack spam. Uh, remains to be seen whether werewolves will still be live attack spam or not, uh, but I, there's a pretty good chance you are just going to live attack spam, so you don't need additional stamina. Uh, while slotted, you gain major brutality, increasing weapon damage by 20%. Uh, I believe on the live server, you have to cast it to get major brutality. So again, like Roar, now you don't need to run weapon power potions at all in order to get your major brutality and major savagery buffs. I would still recommend running them because you get your stamina back, uh, but... If werewolves still end up just light attack spamming, you won't need to use no stamina back. Uh, so, you might not need to run potions at all as a werewolf. A little bit less micromanaging now for, for werewolves. Final ability is Piercing Howl. You crush an enemy with a deafening howl, dealing X amount of physical damage. Enemies who are facing you take 10% more damage from this attack. So this is a change to the secondary effect for Piercing Howl. Uh, I believe Piercing Howl on live sets, does something with off-balance, I think. 10% um, more damage... Not that much. Uh, again, we don't know whether this is like it's already build or not. Whether these tooltip values all come from the same build, even. Uh, so if these all come from the same build and Hercene's Bounty scales off your max health, chances are this is more of a tanky build, less of a DPS oriented build. So this could end up being even stronger. Uh, in which case, 10% more damage on a higher value means obviously damage. So let's say you know, if it's 20,000 versus 7,000. You're going to get more from 10% out of 20,000. Math says that. Um, so, piercing how again, this is the base ability, so we don't know what the morph effects are going to be or not. Um, so we don't know whether this is going to be spammable or not. I don't know if they're trying to make it a spammable. It remains to be seen. We'll see what it looks like once the Greymore PTS comes live on the PTS server. Uh, but yeah, werewolves, you guys got a little bit of love. After... Several patches of getting beat to the ground. You finally get a, a bone here. So it still remains to be seen whether or not these are going to positively impact werewolf DPS. And werewolves did get hit pretty hard with the light and heavy attack changes that are on the PTS right now. So we'll see whether Zoss keeps up with those changes or they nerf those changes. So not as big of a nerf for werewolf DPS. But keep an eye out on this channel. I will probably be taking a look at Werewolf Changes once the Greymoor PTS does go live. But that's it for this video. Again, link in the description below to Hack the Minotaur's video where he goes over these changes more in depth. Highly recommend checking that out if you're interested in SO content as well. But yeah, let me know down in the comment section below whether you guys are excited for these Werewolf Changes and whether or not you think Werewolves are going to be viable again in PvE. That's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.